it's okay to have a beer on the way to the temple. I think the biggest regret of our lives could be, you know, getting to the end of it and somebody playing a movie of the man or the woman you could have been. And then sometimes we gotta just go, man, I'm banging my head on this thing. My head's bruised and bloody. I raised the white flag. I'll fight another battle, man. You got that one. I'm gonna spend some more time on some other problem. Own your future. Because if you don't, someone else will. My guest today, you've seen him in over 50 movies, some of my favorite of all time. Avid Airstream collector. Yeah. You know him from his best selling book, came out in the last couple of years. But I got to tell you, this isn't like an interview where we haven't seen each other. We've been working together for about a week every night till about We've midnight. We've gotten to know each other real well. This <laughs> yeah, week. Really well. And I want to tell you before we start this interview, very rarely you get to know somebody before you do an interview like this. And what I got to learn is someone with an amazing work ethic. Someone who looks at his wife in a way that I know I look at mine and it's pretty damn special to see a connection between a couple that have been together for a long time and, and still have that respect and love with each other and the way he talks about his kids. So I took from really respecting this guy and love this work ethic to a whole nother level and I'm so happy to have him here. Everybody, Matthew McConaughey. Dean, thanks for having me. Oh, thanks good for the to words, have you. I, I'd shake your hand like we just met, but that would be so crazy yeah, since we just spent. We, we shook hands. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> I haven't had many hugs in the last week. Yeah, yeah. it's so good. Good to yeah, have you here. Good to be here. And I meant what I said. It's been fun. You know, sometimes you know the the actor and you know the person behind, but I get to see, get to peek behind the curtain, right. and uh, way more respect when you realize that this is who you are. And what I love the most is your desire to serve. We're, we're in a time in history where people are uncertain. They're scared three years of turmoil, as you said, moving the goalpost. Yeah. And I think it'd be a great time to talk about some of the things that can anchor them in, give them some hope, yeah. like the dust is clearing. How do you go yeah. now? But I figured we'd lighten it up a little bit. And before we get into some of those, <laughs> we've been talking about a lot of stuff for last week and going through, and I love the project you're working. I got something really cool to share here in a little bit. But there's something that I've been laughing over for two days is have a beer on the way to temple. Have Can we beer. just start there? <laughs> it's okay to have a beer on the way to the temple. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> that came to me in a walkabout in Peru. I was on a vision quest. Uh, it was a 21 day trip where I went to find the Amazon. And I was stripping all the sort of symbols that, that I had had in my life. I had just gotten famous in Hollywood, so I was going through some very kind of confusing times, a little information overload about what was real and what wasn't. And it was about day 15. And uh, um, I had been thinking about, I've always gone through times in my life where I abstain from certain things, from celibacy or no, have, not having a drink or what have you, even entertainment. And it, it, they had this, I think it was, I forget the name of the damn beer, but it came in one of those big, it's one of the big bottles, 44 <laughs> ounces. And I had it on a trail um, uh, walking where I ended up drinking it while I was writing in a journal. And I wrote some of my greatest journal entries in, 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 entries in it. And, and I was, that, I would have, don't think I would have written as good of entries if I wouldn't have had that beer right then. And I was like, man, this, I'm, the truth is that crossing me right than, now. Yeah. And this beer's got something to do with that. Thank you. That's right. It's okay. I was shaking a lot of guilt at the, at the time, yeah, too. Yeah. One of them was like, hey, man, it's all right to have a beer on the way to the temple. And I remember writing that down. So that, that was a line, but yes. But it's such a great metaphor. Yeah. It's such a great metaphor. And, and why is it, you know, we've been talking about a lot of stuff the last couple of weeks. Um, I love the difference that how you describe joy versus happiness. Right. You know, the, the, the simple, the, the process of joy yep, yep. compared to happiness. Yep. I mean, that's what we all say, right? What do you want to do? I just want to be happy. Yeah. What can I do? What can I do to be happy? Right. But already those two questions you're saying, what is that thing out there, right. that outcome, it's that result that I can get to so therefore I can be happy? Um, and you and I have talked about this. What happens when we do get that thing that we think is going to make us happy? Well, we usually get it and we up the ante right away and we go, oh, well, look, there's 50 more mountains on the other side I want to climb that I didn't see before I got this. So I'm not happy again. I need to get that. Yeah. Get happy. Or you do get there and it's kind of like, this isn't as, kind of as cool as I thought it was going to be. It's not really fulfilling me like I thought it was something different than I thought it was going to be. But joy is a different thing because it's not predicated, it's not reliant on that outcome or that result or yeah. the, the attachment or the, the ownership and capture of that thing. It's, as my pastor says, the, 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 the process of en, 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 enjoying the doing of what you're fashioned to do. Yeah. So that, when I say process, it's this, that's life, this living thing. Yeah, this, we're gonna do it no we're, matter we're, what. We're, we're on our way. Yeah. And I would also argue this, if we have more joy on the way, 
we get those things that make us happy more often, I would say. Yeah. And again, if we don't get those things, we can all say, well, at least I had a damn good time getting there. Or yeah. trying. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? And, and we forget, like we were talking about, when you, when you find that happiness thing, we, we go by it so quick. Yeah. I had a couple stand up one time. They were in the audience at an event I was doing. She said that their whole dream was to move to California and watch sunsets. And they did everything. They said, someday, they live in the Midwest, someday we're going to get to California. Someday, someday, it's gonna make us happy. That's the dream. Yeah, yeah. Saved up when they're in their 50s, they moved to they moved to California, Northern California. They get a place on the beach and they're watching the sunset go down every day. She goes, I don't know when it happened. She said, but we are a year in, maybe a year and a half in, and my husband looked over at me and said, God damn it, close the blinds. That damn sun is right in my <laughs> face. Right. And yeah. she said, at that moment, their life changed. That's why they were at an event like this. They realized they looked at each other and went, Son of a bitch. What we worked our we whole life. We've been chasing sunsets yeah. at night with a glass of wine. Yeah. Yeah, and this is where we are. And that's that's a good metaphor for a lot of the stuff that we've been we've been talking about. That I know you talk about, and I, I know I talk about. We got a lot of horizons, a lot of sunsets in life that we all chase. That I think what we got to remember is that we don't really catch them. Never. Not while we're here in this life. I don't know. We're gonna find out what we catch once we take our last nap and we yeah. move on from this life. But in this life, we don't ever catch those things. And I don't know about you, man, but when I do feel like I catch them, well, I'm kind of ready to go, that's well, that's nice. over. I want to get back on the road. I want to get back on another chase. But if it, so I think we realize, hey, it's, the, it's okay to chase that sunset, to chase yeah. that horizon, but go, I'm not going to get there. My hunch is that we, we, at the end of our lives, can we look back and go, well, how many staircases did I get up? I never got to the top, never right, got to but I, got I wanted to them. be, but what did I do? And were those steps vertical and how were those steps wide? Maybe a lot of those steps weren't about quantity. Maybe yeah, a lot of them were like I had deep relationships and yeah. roots and I scaled outward as well. And there's a lot, that's worth the measurement. And that's it the is. stuff we don't measure as much. Exactly. Or the world doesn't measure as much. Exactly. You know? and, and why I love this difference between happiness and joy, because joy is, is being in the journey, enjoying it yeah. as you're going, not the end result. Right. And I love the fact of, we talked about looking in the rear view mirror sometimes so you can see how far you've come. Because a lot of times we're yep. looking, I should be here. Yeah, I made this mountain, but look, I'm not in the best shape. Or I'm in yep. good shape, but I'm not making the money. Yep. Right, especially in today's world, we're measured against social media, yep. the, the fake relationships. I, I don't want to be negative, but we only see a glimpse on social. So we, we start comparing, I don't have intimacy, I don't have real love, I yep. don't have the six pack yep. abs. And we forget to look in the mirror and say, wow, I, I've done some amazing right. things. I've accomplished a lot. I'd argue that most midlife crises are more about not appreciating where we've been. Yeah. Maybe sure. not appreciating, giving respect to what we have done or what we already have built. Again, because we thought they were happy. Yeah. Oh, we'd get there and it's done. It's like, so we don't give them credit. No, we built some, look at the things in our past that we built. And I think in those times where our future is uncertain, that's a great place to look and go, well, what have I built here Yeah. already? And I want to give myself respect. Not yeah. a big pat on the back, but I want to say, hey, Enough. Man, little job nudge, right there. A little nudge, yeah. It also defines, well, I know this going forward, I've built some stuff that's non-negotiably going with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got to tend to those things no matter what new horizon I'm chasing or new place I'm going. I got some stuff going with me, my family, my kids, this part of my career. That's not negotiable. So even though I may be uncertain in where I'm going in the future, I got some baggage. I got some luggage that's going with me Yeah. no matter what. And that's giving respect to those things. I think that's where a lot of us get in a crisis sometimes, yeah, or even a, a typical midlife crisis. We don't respect what we've done and what we've built and appreciate where we've been maybe enough. Yeah, maybe it's time to take a, a moment and just think about that. Like we're always looking forward to that horizon. You can never catch it no matter how fast right. you run west. But looking back on what you accomplished and just really differentiating happiness and joy. You know, it, it, it is a time of craziness, right? I've been in this industry and been around for in business for 30 something years. Um, and I've never seen a time where people are so unsure they want to do something, but they're just not sure which way they're going to go. Yeah. I think it's a time where the world is kind of pushing us apart that we should be way more unalike yep. than we are yep. alike. Yep. And that just, to me, that just robs your confidence. And if your yep. confidence is down, I guess you can call it uncertainty, but then you're not courageous to do the thing you want to do. And I would bet to say when people see you, Matthew, 50 movies, Academy Award, amazing family, all the things, they wouldn't think of some of the struggles they're going through at home right now that mm. you experience. And there's one story, and I know you've shared it before, but maybe we could dig a little deeper, is when you decided not to do rom-coms anymore, mm. right? Mm. And I'm switching into this because 
no one would ever think that, <laughs> that we talked about that self-doubt, right? I'm not doing rom-coms. I want dramas. Yeah. And that was a good idea. And you bailed out of California, right? You moved to Texas, yep. moved to Austin, and you told your family. And I think that's some of the things I, I don't think I've ever heard before, talking about that, that craziness feel. And what it felt like at six months and then yep. eight months and 12 months. And so, yeah, I'd, I had been doing wonderful and romantic comedies. I loved doing them. They paid well. They, I enjoyed them. But I was at a time in my life that was extremely vital, vital. And I would yeah. say really dramatic in a good way. Um, I'd fall in love with a woman that was going to become my wife and I have a family with. She was pregnant with our first child. My only dream of my life had always been to be a father. And, oh, I hear it was about to happen, man. I was, I mean, I was laughing harder, crying harder, feeling more rage, feeling more um, joy. Yeah. Um, it was just, life was vital. But my work kind of felt like, yeah, kind of, I'll do that again. And I wanted my work to challenge the vitality of my life. I do yeah. remember this. I did look in the mirror and go, don't you be an arrogant son of a bitch. Be glad that you're feeling like your life's more vital than your work and it's yeah, not the yeah, other way around. Yeah, exactly. We've all been there too, We've been right? there too, yeah. But I said, well, can I do some work that can maybe challenge the vitality of my life? And that was the dramas I wanted to do. But Hollywood wasn't offering me those dramas. No matter how big of a pay cut I would say I'd take, they weren't offering them. So I said, well, if I can't do what I want to do, I'm going to quit doing what I've been doing, which was the rom-com. Packed up, moved to Texas. All right, here we go. Camilla's on board. I'm on board. My agent's on board. We'll show them. You guys know where to find me. <laughs> but they weren't looking okay, for me. <laughs> they didn't. They weren't trying to find McConaughey. It was just fine that McConaughey had left town, right? So a few uh, romantic comedy offers came in early. I was like immediately like, nope, 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 nope. Then nothing started to come in. We get to about six months, no work. I'm still feeling strong, but I'm feeling like, huh, I might have just written my ass a one-way ticket out of Hollywood, <laughs> you know? Um, I might need to think about other vocations. I, I don't know, it was good, a little, little off balance. Um, so those don't come in. I call my agent. Between that six months and 12 months, and every call, he's like, McConaughey, I hadn't heard your name in two weeks, one month, two months. Now I'm kind of persona non grata there for yeah. a while. I'm like, they forgot me. Well, another rom-com comes in. This is like month, I don't know, 16, 18. No work. With an $8 million offer. It's a nice-ass offer. I read it. It's not bad. It's a rom-com. Say, no, thank you. They come back, $10 million offer. I said, I said, no, thank you. They come back with a $12.5 million offer. Kind of no thank you. No, thank you. They come back with a $14.5 million offer. What did I say? Let me read that thing again. <laughs> Got a little funny. Yeah, didn't hang on a second. I did read it again. Did it seem funny? Same script. It was funnier. The same exact <laughs> words as the first statement offer, but it was a better written script, right? Yeah. And, I, and, and, and I could see how it might be right for me or yeah. so. And, and, uh, um, but I ultimately said no. Yeah. And that was a big seminal moment, I think, to Hollywood. Because that's when Hollywood goes, oh, he's not bluffing. Yeah. Oh, it sort of sent like a little trigger through Hollywood. It was like, what's he doing? He's actually committed to his choice, so he's got something. Something about it made me more attractive, I think. Yeah. To them, and then being a, being eighteen months where I hadn't been in the business, it simultaneously was around the time where I'd been gone long enough where I was kind of becoming a novel, possibly good idea. Yeah. For one of these dramas that I wanted, and at twenty months, that's when I got the call, and I started went on that run with Lincoln Lawyer and Killed Joe and Paperboy and True Detective and Mud and. It was a uh, Dallas Buyers Club, yeah. and I just, everything that I wanted came. And it wouldn't have come, no way it would have come, if I wouldn't have stopped, said no, put myself in the desert, and just unbranded yeah. myself. And that's why, that's, this, this story is so intriguing, because when you're in it, you tell the story now, because you're on the other side. Yeah. But when you're in it, and you're like, getting down to the, there's so many people watching right now dying to pivot. Right. They're just afraid to start small. Yeah. They're afraid to give up on the thing that their family friends said, you should be lucky to have this job. Yeah, I know you don't yeah, love it, yeah, but it pays the bills. 
think of in that same going from rom-coms to dramas is the same of saying, Hey, I'm finally quitting that job and starting my own thing. Yeah. And in that your family thinks you're nuts. My brothers thought I was completely off my rocker. So okay, you're so completely <laughs> mentally meditated, boy. What is your major malfunction? <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but they knew me well enough that I had made the decision. They were yeah. like, you're crazy. Okay. Yeah. My wife and I had already made the covenant together. Yeah. We shared the tears before the decision was ever made. We had long nights, yeah. sleepless nights of me going through the grovel of what do I got to do? What do I got to do to make the decision? So she was in with me the whole way and she was there to support going, we know we're not going back. She never questioned like, she questioned less probably than I did. Yeah. Of, oh, do we ever go back on this decision? Um, like I said, I had days, a lot of them where that bottle of what I like to drink was looking better and better earlier and earlier yeah. in the day. The days were getting long, man. I didn't have purpose. I was like, what's my significance? I don't feel significant. Yeah. What am I doing? And I think that's so important for people to hear because you would never think that. Oh, Matthew McConaughey, was... you did the Dallas Buyers Club, everything you've done, but no one sees that two-year window yeah. where you you literally thought of being a coach. I thought of being say? a high school football coach. I thought of being uh, uh, an orchestral conductor. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I thought of uh, a wildlife expedition guide. Uh, I thought about going back to law school, possibly. Wow. And they were serious considerations because the signal from Hollywood was, Thanks. Later. Enjoyed you while you're here. You got out of your lane. Should have stayed in it. Too bad. And then, before we move on to that, what do you think is the thing that kept driving you to say no to 14.5 million when you didn't know your your agent was probably saying, "Hey, McConaughey, come on." I gotta give you gotta give a big up to my agent at that time. He stayed with you. I got it. The, when I first called that son of a gun and said, <laughs> "This is what I'm gonna do. No rom coms." He immediately goes. Okay, no problem. And I said to him, what do you mean, you, no problem? You can't just throw that out here like, no problem. What are you, what's your boss is going to say Monday morning when you go in, your boss of your agency, and you tell them McConaughey's not doing rom-coms anymore. I've been giving a pretty good 10% tithe <laughs> commission to you guys for a while. They're not yeah. going to go, no problem, because I don't work for them. I work for you. Wow. Good dude. And so when that 14.5 came, he didn't go great. He went, mm, okay. Yeah. You know? All right, so let's let's take this transition. Movies, acting, rom-coms, yeah. the drama, Academy Award. You decide to write a book called Green Lights. Um, that's why we're here. Yeah. I, I read Green Lights, I listened to Green Lights. I read it first, then I listened to it. And I just felt, I said, it was beyond anything I expected from it. I expected a great story of inspiration. Right. And there was a lot of transformative stuff in there. And I watched the comments and I know everybody who read the book that transition into that, you took one deeper step than just writing a book about your life. Yeah. You gave us things to contemplate, things to put in our own lives, things that could shift. And not in an arrogant way, like, mm. look at me, I'm up on mm. the hill, look how mm. good I did. Felt like you were down in the ditch with us saying, hey, I've been up there. Yeah. Let's go up together. Here's some things I found along the yeah. way. I mean, the movie career, amazing. Impact that you made, amazing. What is, what is this new kind of, not a career, but a new path you're on. Yeah. What does it mean to you? Well, the book was something we talked about earlier about looking to the past, <laughs> just kind yeah. of understand where we're going. Just, and hence, it helps us understand kind of where we are. I'd never been a rear view mirror, look over my shoulder kind of guy. I like to do things. Going I think I said something. earlier before we were recording, I've made 54 movies. I hadn't seen all of them. I like making them more than I like <laughs> watching them. I just yeah. don't even, I'm like, done, got it, move on. The book was a two, three year process of looking back yeah. over journals I had kept for 35 years and seeing consistencies in behavior that I had that led to my success and choices I made in life that I engineered yeah. things that and got to get what I wanted. Also seeing places where I stepped in piles of shit and had bright ideas that were pff, way out of bounds and did yeah. not work at all and did not feed me. Um, so, that was a great exercise for me to do that and then to put it out and then for hear things like that. Here's what I got from it. And you're not me. Yeah. That I've had people come up and go, hey man, I see my story and your story. I'm taking risk now to do things that I didn't quite have the courage to do before. Cause I'm like, I saw it in your book, you did that and it paid off or you did that and it didn't pay off, but you were able to laugh it off and move on. And to have people come up and say that to me, that they saw themselves yeah. through. It's addicting, isn't it? The, yeah. Listen, I yeah. was in a conference room doing a business deal six months ago and someone said, 
in the middle of just not even knowing you and I were talking, considering doing some work together. And somebody says, you know, this contract, this deal was a red light. And I see it's a green light now. Just like yeah, that. And it was right referencing. On. And I was like, that is damn cool. It right? is cool to hear. Like, yeah. It's... I mean, there's some, you know, Wooderson had some had some good comments too, but this one's a little more positive. Like yes. This. Yes, yeah. indeed. I mean, so now part of the reason that I'm in this part of my life, and part of the reason that I wrote the book was I think we all want to do this in our life some in some ways. Making movies, which I love to do and always love to do, it's still four filters removed from my direct expression. Yeah. It's someone else's script, it's someone else's character, it's recorded by someone else's lens, it's edited by someone else before it's put out there. Yeah. And people see it and see your work. Love it. But it's four filters from the original raw. Never thought of it that way. The book we got rid of three filters. Yeah. It's still a written word, but it's yours. But it's mine. I'm the character. I wrote the script. I did the editing, so to speak, you know. And but it's still a written word. This, the live interaction, Lamore. This, this is no filter. Yeah. This is where it's really at. So I'm always like, I always challenge myself, going, well, "What do you? Action's been called in life one time, the day we were born, and cut's gonna be called one, one time, time the day done. we leave this life. So yeah. what are we doing? And if you know." God or the prime mover, the way makers, the director, the, the, the camera's been rolling. Yeah. History will tell the story. Yeah. Our story will be there, you know? So, we're, and it's live, we're in it. We're living it right now. So what are we doing? Who are we gonna be? That's kind of the challenge I was saying to myself, get rid of the filters. As much as I love to go play someone else. And as much as I also believe that we in our lives can be whoever we wanna create ourselves to be, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's yeah. awesome to do that. What, what are we, what am, I, what am I doing when it's live? Yeah. And that's the challenge I'm, I'm putting on myself. No, what, I love it. In, when, when this life that is live and the camera is rolling, it is being recorded. You know, Dale Carnegie said the biggest plight of the human race is knowing you have more potential and then not utilizing it. Right. Right. And and knowing knowing you not, have and, and not utilizing not knowing. just just what you've written about a lot is yeah. just the not knowing of what's oh. on the other side, uh, right? I think yeah. I think the biggest regret of our lives could be, you know, getting to the end of it and somebody playing a movie of the man or the woman you could have been, right? That would be the, like, it's all- I think, <laughs> oh, I, I think I'm gonna have, that. I mean, maybe, I think, do we, do we all have maybe a little bit of that movie? Some <laughs> yeah. of those are just yeah, shorter, let's hope longer. It's just shorter. I just hope let's it's just a short hope it's short. But yeah. there also, isn't it a dream that you play it and somebody goes, that crazy <laughs> bastard. Yeah. Like there was yeah. nothing, you didn't try. Yeah. You know, you just said something though I really didn't think about. Even when you do interviews and if it's about a movie, you're on, if there's an interview, you're promoting the movie, not Matthew McConaughey. Right, right. right. right? I mean, it's still, they're getting to yeah. know you a little. So it's been great. And I want to tell you, when you were looking back, when there's certain things that you do when you're in it, at least I noticed this, I've written a few books myself, when you look back, you're like, oh my God, that's a pattern right. that got me through the hardships. Yep. Oh my God, I do focus on solutions. Yep. When you're in it, and it's something to think about, when you're in it, you're not like, I'm a solution-focused person, no. right? I love the movie, no. or the, the story you told about when you shaved your head, right? Yeah. Like, that just showed to me the night we were talking about, it, I was like, damn, you're just an immediately solution-oriented person. You didn't come up with a script and say, this is who I am. Right, right, it's just right, what you right, did, right. and now it's a pattern and you're teaching other people. Right. Right? Yeah. I think that's a key for all of us is, and I call this once we are faced with the inevitable, get relative. Meaning the quicker we are faced with a, a struggle or a problem that we need to solve, the quicker we go, all right, is this real? Yep, it's real. All right, what am I going to do about this? Yeah. Instead of going, I can't Who's believe Whose fault this it is? Me. Why me? This, is this really real? It's real again. It's real again tomorrow. It's real again. Then it's been real for a day. It's been real for a week. It's been, it's been real for a year. It's been real for a decade. Yeah. It's been real my whole life. The quicker we go, no, it's real. Now, what, 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 let's get on with keeping our eyes open for solutions. How can I, sometimes, how can I out-hustle this situation? Uh, sometimes, how can I out-endure this situation? Yeah. Sometimes it's, whoop, I need to pivot. Need to change the old aperture, chain lenses on the way. I'm looking at this position. I've been banging my head on this door only to find out that if I backed up 10 feet, I could see there's a, <laughs> there's a opening over there and yeah. I can walk around the damn door. Yeah. And then sometimes we got to just go, man, I'm banging my head on this thing. My head's bruised and bloody. And I've looked all around it from every angle. I don't see a solution. I raise the white flag. I'll yeah. fight another battle, man. Locked. You got that one. I'm going to spend some more time on some other problem. Yeah.
And as simple as that sounds, most people will jiggle the door of a locked door for so long, right? Yeah. It's the simple book, Who Moved My Cheese, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, 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 this cheese is supposed to be coming back every day. I'm just going to wait for it to come back. And if not, I'm going to blame somebody right. and keep blaming them yeah. until it comes back. And the little men were like, uh, little mice were like, hey, I, yeah. I'm going to just go look for some more cheese, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Um, so what does... Um, I love it throughout the entire book, and I can't wait to share what, what you got coming up here in a little bit. But what does the art of living mean to you? Now, I kind of know because I okay. got Okay. The art of living. It's a big question, uh, but people are like, what is that? Yeah. So let's start with some science first, which we were talking about. Yeah. Choices you can make that can engineer success, engineer ways we get more of what we want in life. Going back, seeing habits, patterns that we have. Oh, this led to success. I was healthier. I was happier. My relationships were stronger. There were certain things I was doing. We look at our life, we'll find certain consistencies. Yeah. It may be diet. It may be who we're hanging out with. Yeah. It may be what we do right before we go to bed or what we do, what, how we start our day. And we start to forget them along the way, right? And yeah. We can go back and go, oh, yeah, I got to do that, that used again. to work, yeah. Life was, I was embracing it. And life, I was getting what, more of what I wanted from life. There's some scientific things about that we can do. So what, what you learn in the science, like any knowledge, yeah. go to school, you learn something, you're not good at it while you're learning it. You're not good at anything when it's from the neck up. <laughs> right, right. You're good at body. it when it starts to go down through the body and gets in your heart and your soul and becomes instinctual. Yeah. That's where the art comes in. Yeah. That's where the knowledge turns to wisdom. That's where you start to see, I think, that this thing we're in in life is a game. It's a dance, man. There's an ebb and a flow. There's context. It's a paradox. This can be true and that can be true. For every credit, I got a debit. There's an exchange rate with everything. Yep. And you can go in and now you're kind of painting. And, and, and it's also, I think, realizing. Joy is more of an art than happiness. Yeah. Happiness is more of a science. Science. If I get this, I'll be I'll happy. That. Joy is like, I'm just going to be happy way. along the way. Joy is the, 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 the art. Yep. It's, 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 an, it's an art. We don't, it's not, a, I always say this, life's a verb. Yeah. We're all these things in our life, good and bad, happy and sad. They're commas, not periods <laughs> in our life. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's, it, big change can be what? A new chapter, but it's only one book. The one that we first started writing the day we were born, the one we'll yeah. stop writing when we leave this life. It's only one book. Right. Can't switch books. You know, <laughs> and there's that's where the art, I believe, lives. Now, look, that's in, uh, intuition. A lot of non non scientific things come come into that, and you, I can't. I'm not going to even try to say, oh, here's exactly what that is. But you can define the science first. I think we're going to be better at becoming masters of the art, or better artist after that. Um, so it's preparation leading to freedom. Yeah, freedom is an art. Preparation is science. And you're saying choose. One, one, I love the way you talk about choices and choosing. I know you had the choice challenge and we just spent some time on choose. Why, why is making a choice, not choices, mm. but why is making a choice so important? Making and I know it's an obvious question, but so, so many, important, because, right. I, because I believe there's more people than I go. wish watching right now yeah. that have been thinking about something yeah. for too long. Well, and, and, and let's, let's revisit what you said earlier about our specific time where we are right now. Yeah. You just had three big years of COVID, man. Talk about uncertainty. That's a disruption that wherever you stood on it and however much you, 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 you quarantined or didn't, it disrupted everybody. Absolutely. You couldn't trust a plan forward, I don't know, more than freaking 48 hours. True story. Time. Um, so we were all in limbo. Didn't know what to try. You didn't, the future was not clear for really anybody. Yeah. Even if it was for ourselves, you couldn't depend on the rest of the world kind of being in accordance with that to a certain True extent. True story. You know? So now that we're coming out in this time where, hey, to some extent, I think mean, some dust has settled. The, 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 the horizon is out there to go on now. And now's the time to start making plans and make choices that we can rely on a little bit more. True. The importance of the choice especially after coming out of three <laughs> yeah. years of limbo where we're like, well, I'm kind of stagnant. I don't know which one to. One to weigh consequences of each choice. But to get back to your point, the choice, sometimes it's just more important to make the damn choice. That, that was the whole point. Commit to it and go forward and find out so you don't find yourself 
after three years of limbo we've been in, being Another in four three. years, five years, six years, a decade of limbo, and you look back and you go, oh, I, I'm still walking the tightrope. Yeah. Why didn't I just jump? Because what happens when we what happens when we jump and just make a choice? If we fail, it very seldom hurts as much as we thought. It Absolutely. Was be. And we don't have any regrets. Found without out, the choice. Found out, and, and all the people that went na 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 boo boo, you didn't want them to be in your life anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>, true story. <laughs> you know what I mean? So good. We define them, you know. But the people that when you fail after you make a choice that come over and go, hey man, me too. <laughs> I yeah. did the same thing. You're like, hey, yeah. you found a good friend, you found a good Soldier, you found a good acquaintance. You found somebody that's on your side. That's the people you want in your life anyway. But you, to go find out. It all, what happens is this. You make a choice. It's the right choice. Not necessarily always because it gives you that outcome. Yeah. It happens that you want it. But you got on the path. And something better and something came. else got introduced yeah. to you. Because you got in action. It's the inaction of uncertainty that can paralyze us that we got to watch. Sometimes, man, just make it. Find out. And if you don't. Forgive yourself, and guess what? The world, will, the world will too. And the thing is, when when a choice is hard, congratulations for being human. Like, yeah, the choices that are hard are usually the next level of our life or experience is on the other side of that choice. Yeah, like you yeah. choosing to give up on you never would have discovered dramas. Right. Right. You never would have got Dallas Buyers Club. Uh -uh. You might not have written the book at the time you right. did. You never all those things might not have happened, but you had to choose to stick with something yeah. that was scary. And people are afraid sometimes to start small, start right. new, pivot. All those things. They're they're choices yeah. that are scary. And I think what you did so well in Green Lights, and I want to talk about the live event you got coming up here, but what you did so well in Green Lights, and I'm not sure you even maybe you realized it when you started, is it's an empowerment book because you write in a way, you share in a way, you talk in a way that it doesn't feel like you're talking at everybody. You're talking right. with us. The royal we, the as royal you say. We. But that's but that's it's not calculated on your side. That's who you are. Right. right? And right, what, right, what I right, see right. and what I love about this relationship and watching what you're doing is your depth of caring for people is the reason that book went so viral. And the reason I'm so excited about Amen. And it's a true story. And I and I'm Super excited. So I'd love to talk about the art of living live event. So what, uh, so why should everybody be signing up and going to the art of living? Well, we're going to get under the hood of green lights. A lot of things yeah. we've been talking about, you know, green lights, uh, was, we said an approach. Yeah. Book. the biggest questions I've gotten through the years since writing is okay. Okay. But, but how do I know what to do at a yellow light or how do I know <laughs> to, when to trust a green or how do I know that, that is the buzz behind it. It's like, I love the green lights, but how, do, but kind of, how do I get through the reds? Yeah. 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 And, and how do I trust that I'm on the right, following the right greens and how do I know I made the right choice at the yellows, you know? So what we're going to do on the fourth is start to get under the hood of, okay, there's a, there, there's a, where green lights was an approach book. Let's talk about some process Yeah. that each of, you individually can go, oh, I see that's how, what I can do in my life. Oh, okay, I've been in that same decision-making paradigm. Oh, and there's a few new measurements maybe that I can calculate that I didn't ever think about before yeah. on what choice is gonna give me more of what I want and need. That's what we're gonna be Yeah, no, I'm stoked. And I, I love that I get to be a part of it. So this is a URL, go to living. 2023.com living 2023.com L-I-V-I-N, no G on the end because life is a Verb. <laughs> Life is a verb. And uh, here's the cool part. Uh, you're doing it for free, which is yeah. amazing. Uh, the cool part, myself, Tony Robbins, some yeah. other special guests are coming. And this is Matthew's desire to serve, to give back, to give yeah. you some more process in this shifting time. Because the fact of the matter is, there can't be any more delays. This is not a time to wait for the next president, right? wait no. for the next Congress or Senate or something's going to shift. In, in all of my years, one of the greatest gifts I've ever had, and it came from my grandmother, is that no one's coming to save us. No. We gotta take ownership. Yeah. We have to gain new skills. If your best thinking got you to where you are today, maybe you just need a spark, a shift, a, a metaphor, a poem, mm. a, a, a rhyme, mm. a, a message that makes you go, oh, I gotta shift that. Yeah. I, I gotta make that choice. I gotta make that change. And that's why I love that you're doing this. Well, everyone's here and you know this, this is what you do. It's what you've been doing and, 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 and selling and giving for a lot longer than I have. It. Uh, these, these, uh, uh, this life that we're living, who, who better to get to know than ourselves? Than ourselves. Who, yeah. I mean, we're the most entertaining subjects we got. And, 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 the, and the only one we got. 
And the only one we're stuck with. <laughs> Forever, no matter what. <laughs> no matter what, right? So now all those things, the world's going to change. There'll be new leadership and presence. Those things will change. This is Keep the our consistent. eye on them. But the one way to navigate and be our own captain, because no one is coming to save us, is, is ourselves. <laughs> and boy, we can all use some some tools yeah. and some and some some help along the way. That's an, that we. If that's what we're looking for, we got we got we got job security for our lives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean? you know, so I'm laughing because you gave me a new term. That's dusty. Yeah. <laughs> Something's old, worn out, used too much. So my team's gonna get them like that's a dusty idea. But I was thinking of a dusty idea of of with so much uncertainty in the outside world. Sometimes we're waiting for the outside world to get better, to give us permission yeah. to say, "Here's your lane. You can do it." And that's kind of this is the dusty thought is, um, it's the difference between the thermometer and the thermostat. Right, we 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 be, we don't realize in uncertain times we're like a thermometer. We go up and down with right, the news. Right, it's right. good news, bad news. Good president, bad president. I hate the last one. I hate the current one. I hate both of them. And we're and we're watching, waiting for this to come to like a temperature that's good right. for us. And every once in a while we feel it, and it, nah, it's not. But when you're the thermostat, you can just put that thing on seventy or sixty-eight yeah. or seventy-two, and it's like that's me. But sometimes we need that spark. That's finding our frequency. Yeah. That's also. Uh, I'm just finding our frequency. That's uh, um, uh, you said just a second ago. Um, um, Rhythm or, or no, our degrees, no, like our temperature. Oh, what was it? Well, it's finding our frequency. Yeah. Um, but it's that's the art. Yeah. That's that's becoming an artist. That's becoming yeah. the artist of that's becoming the art yeah. of living right there. When all these things change, but you've got some things you can trust in through it all, where your temperature. It's gonna get hotter, it's gonna get cooler, but it's not gonna spike. Because you you got down. your hand on it. Yeah. It might get a little shaky, like yeah. you said, but when you let someone else in control, there's nobody gonna take you to where you wanna go. No one coming to save you. Yeah. And I just, I think that's one of the greatest gifts my grandmother gave yeah. me. It's like, you fail, it's on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make it, yeah. it's on you as well. Go to living, because it's a verb, L-I-V-I-N, 2023.com, free event. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. I feel honored to be helping you uh, craft this and make it a special day. You and your team have been great. We've been, we've been getting after it. <laughs> we've been it. getting and after it. I am, I was so excited at the beginning of this process, the proposition, thank yep. you, and the opportunity. I was really excited when we got into it a week ago, but I'm at least 10 times more excited oh, about it cool. now after a week and the work we've done and what this is going to be and what it can be and what it, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm as excited about this as, as, as any project I've ever, I've ever worked on. I'm, I'm really excited to be sharing what we're, what we're Yeah. Sharing. And, and the last thing I'll say as we, as we wind down here is it's been amazing watching your, not only your excitement, but your work ethic. The, what Matthew has planned for you guys isn't five minutes. Hey, let's turn on the camera and I'll talk about some stuff from green lights. No. Every single bit of his thought through, to meet you where you are today and like the, the royal we we're all going to experience this together like i think you just wrote a few minutes ago sometimes i'll take the driver's seat sometimes i'll be shotgun right. with you let's right. let's go together to go from where we are to where we want to be right any last words just keep living that's what we're here to do let's do it what a great way to end this episode just keep living from matthew mcconaughey and if you love this episode why not share it with three friends right now and heck, go back and watch or download the last three. And if you'd like to be a part of our newsletter so you can get reminders of amazing interviews like this, go to deansnewsletter.com. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Own Your Future podcast.